Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to Nispy Reviews where today I'll be checking out a track from an act named Sammy Bissasso titled Lift Him High. And if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on YouTube, we're going to list it through it from start to finish and we're going to hear what we think. Let's go, let's do it. What do we got? Lift him high. I'm liking Lift the woodwinds. And the clarity of the vocals in the mix is nice as well. Oh no, that's like a, a saxophone, isn't it? Never mind. No, it is a saxophone, never mind. Very subtle piano line underneath. I like how the piano line caresses the vocals in the center and how you got a call and response with that saxophone line with some really articulate friendly melodies there. And I think having that little drum fill there with the hi-hats was great because it really sort of like brings it away from the vocals. You get the feeling we're going into something bigger. Even if you don't elevate it too much with those double tracked vocals we have now, it's definitely sufficient. Okay, so basically this track is about celebrating the spirituality, lifting God up high, you know? It's being thankful for their presence in your life. That was an incredibly uh, energetic and technical little line there with the legato passages on the sax on the left. I'm liking these backing lady vocals as well. They're really fleshing out the stereo field there and adding a nice positive sort of uh, articulation and uh, mood to it. It is an interesting combination of these kind of trappish kind of hip hop drums with the piano line that's soft and soothing and then you got like again the, the brass, you know, the sax and uh, you know, it's an interesting combination of elements but they do piece together well. There's a lot of nuance in there but I think it's working. And I like the roundness of that bass in the low end there again. I'm familiar with the theme at this point. You've got like a nice easy to follow four chord progression that goes nice and slowly. What I like as well is the fact that the tone of the vocals is very it's kind of caring. It's loving and caring and it makes a lot of sense when you listen to the lyrics. Promoting really well. And it's a really simple song thematically. I think for people that are a fan of this kind of music, they'll be able to get behind it fairly easily. There's these kind of perky little synths that have come in now. I'm not sure if they were there before, but they're definitely there now. And they kind of elevated a little bit. A little bit of that sort of brightness, that sheen to it. These overdubs are fantastic. It really sounds like the outro chorus now. It'd be a little bit disappointing if we had more of an outro than this, because I think we've already got the motif and the main hook line enough at this point. 
I think we're making good use of the real estate we've got within the street in a 45 track. Good job. Yeah, I'm glad that we're kind of taking everything out in the low end now. We're, we're conscious that we've had a lot of everything, so we're kind of minimizing it. Semi production, spreading the word through entertainment. Oh, we've got flames. As well as semibasasa.com for the website. Cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. Because this is effectively the conclusion of my review of Lift Him High by Semi Basasa. What do I think the track is about? I think it's about celebrating the Lord, you know, spreading the word of that, lifting him high, allowing him to take us all in under his wing and everything like that. It's basically about being thankful and showing gratitude and stuff like that. And I think that's beautiful. The vocals behind it, um, well, the backing vocals from the lady singers were sensational. There was a lot of it, but I didn't necessarily mind that. I think it was great that we had a lot of texture there, those different layers of different parts coming in at different times and had a sort of an intricate tapestry there that I think most people could appreciate. I think that in terms of like uh, Sammy's vocals, you know, Sammy Basasso's vocals, uh, we handled his range really well, nice head and chest voice, as well as the lady vocalists in the background. Had a fantastic sort of power of anchoring it amongst the vibratos and legato passages of the various vocal runs of the singers behind him, as well as himself. But he told the story well, he clearly cared about what he was singing about. And yeah, I think it was a very authentic and genuine performance from someone who generally just wants to sort of spread this with people and uh, help people to come together. I think it's a... Uh, it's a nice thing to talk about, especially this time of year where it's getting closer to Christmas and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's wonderful. It's a beautiful thing. You know, hopefully uh, people who are into this kind of music really enjoy it as well. You know, complaints about the singing at all. You know, a great presence in the track amongst the, uh, the bass and the drums and the saxophone parts and, uh, you know, the synth part bits on the side. Yeah, it was very active. There was a lot of variation to the way the instruments were played throughout, you know. The drums had like a center groove we worked with like a halftime feel but there were some little fills and twists where they kind of sped it up a little bit and add a bit more sort of like rhythmic complexity to it that kind of helped to keep those transitional parts sounding nice and fresh the bass line stu stuck around those root notes and those chord progressions really well um the vocals they predominantly formed the harmony there for a lot of it you know um, we had the piano as well in the background that was nice and articulate with those arpeggios and melodic passages there. But it's, it's straight away from doing chords which I kind of like as well because so that it never felt like too much or it never got too heavy or too sort of weighed way down by the, the accompaniment. The synth parts that came in a little bit later, those kind of staccato bits, they were nice and present in the mix. They uh, added a great sense of presence overall to it and filled out that right side of the stereo field and we had the sax on the left. And there was a four chord progression that was uh, developed really well with a lot of those sort of lead passages from said saxophone, saxophonist, and uh, those little extra points of anchoring with the uh, other instruments as well, including the really sort of like almost virtuosic parts on the piano that were nice and gliding along with a real sort of sense of smoothness. You know, at three minutes 45, we had verses and choruses and we had extended choruses. We didn't have any set solo parts or lead sections, but that's okay, I don't particularly mind that. I think we have a musician here who is thoroughly comfortable just focusing on the story. And I don't have an issue with that. I think if you can tell a story and it's engaging, it's good. I'm glad we ended it where we did. I don't think we would have necessarily had anything more than diminishing returns if it would continue to sort of like communicate that hook section there. So I think it was smart to have it drop out there at that point. We got the lip point over to the listener, so structurally it was fine. The production, recording, mixing and mastering. I mean, like the performance itself on the various instruments was great, great don't get me wrong. It was phenomenal, but I also have to give a shout out to the studio side of things because the clarity of the vocals, including the backing and the main were fantastic. Nice securing and filtering there. The saxophone on the left and then the synths on the right, as well as the piano cascading around the place. The drums were nicely side-chained and the bass that was smooth and low end. Those were all recorded well. Um, no complaints whatsoever with those, a nice mix of acoustic and electronic synthetic elements there. Nice notching of stuff in the frequency spectrum, there weren't any weird resonant frequencies. Nice and wide in the stereo field. 
lots to play attention to, especially with those different vocal overdubs there that came in occasionally from either side. It was very interesting to listen to from a sonic perspective. And, uh, you know, leveling of the various elements of the mix was great. And the limiting compression on the Master Bus was fine. It was loud without any pumping. And that's effectively my review of uh, Semi Basasso's Lift Them High. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go check out his various social medias and his YouTube page. And stay cool, stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. As either how more than ever with all the crazy stuff goes on in the world. And I'll catch you in the next review. Spider hands out.